Hello people, in this video we, we want to look at a retropharyngeal abscess, something behind the pharynx, retropharyngeal abscess, right? So this is coming under head and neck space infections. So you can see here, neck only they have shown here, right? Head and neck. So here they have marked the retropharyngeal abscess, radiograph of soft tissue, lateral view neck showing widening of pre-vertebral space with gas formation. So let us look at important spaces of the head and neck and the associates of infection. So here you have the retropharyngeal space. From where to where is it? We have to look at this. And um, so from where will it get infection? That also they have written here. Let us first understand its extent. So retropharyngeal space anatomy. Let us look at where exactly this retropharyngeal space is. So here you have your pharynx, this is your buccopharyngeal fascia. So behind this buccopharyngeal fascia, here they have marked retropharyngeal space. Looks like on both sides it is there. And middle there is some raphe, which divides this uh, retropharyngeal space into two halves. And behind the retropharyngeal space, what do you have? You have the alar fascia and behind the alar fascia you have some space called as the danger space behind that you have the pre-vertebral fascia and then you have the pre-vertebral space wow did you get it guys pharynx retropharynx danger space and then the pre-vertebral space right so at least this much you should have understood so retropharyngeal space from where to where is it? It is behind the pharynx. Yes, we understood it is behind the pharynx. It lies between the buccopharyngeal fascia okay, and the prevertebral fascia. So, it is somewhere between the buccopharyngeal fascia and the prevertebral fascia. Is it? Is it between the buccopharyngeal fascia and the prevertebral fascia? That means it includes the danger of space also or what? Wait, let's see. Then it extends from the base of skull. So now they are telling you this is basically a cross section, right? This is an axial section. What about um, the sagittal section? That they are telling you it extends from the base of the skull to the bifurcation of the trachea. So let's go back here and see that. From the base of the skull, from the base of the skull to the bifurcation of the trachea. From where the trachea will uh, go into the bifurcate, it will become what? Bronchi, right? So, till there you have this retropharyngeal space, is it? Okay. So, now you understood the extent of the retropharyngeal space. Now, this space is divided into two lateral compartments. These are called as the spaces of gillette. Okay. Spaces of gillette by some fibrous raphe. So, you can see here, by the fibrous raphe, the retropharyngeal space is divided into the left and the right and these are spaces are called spaces of gillette, G-I-L-L-E-T-T-E, -T -T -E, spaces of gillette by this fibrous raphe, okay. Then, Each lateral space contains retropharyngeal nodes, so they have some lymph nodes. Each lateral space has lymph nodes which usually disappear at 3 to 4 years of age. The lymph nodes will disappear, is it? Parapharyngeal space communicates with the retropharyngeal space. So, obviously, all these spaces are communicating and one space infection will lead to another space infection. So, parapharyngeal space communicates with the retropharyngeal space. Retropharyngeal space and the infection of the retropharyngeal space can pass down behind the esophagus into the mediastinum. So, all these spaces will communicate and the infection can pass from here to there behind the esophagus into the mediastinum. So, let us see where this uh, parapharyngeal space is. Here, here you have the parapharyngeal space. So, this one communicates with the retropharyngeal space. So, they can again uh, communicate. Okay. See guys, from behind. From behind, that is, uh, you can see the ears are facing that side. So, you can see the lymph nodes, the retropharyngeal lymph nodes. So, they said, right, both left and right, whatever retropharyngeal space you have, both of them will have retropharyngeal lymph nodes, right? And uh, the node of rovior, some 
roe veer is the one that is the uppermost and these disappear by 3 to 4 years of age right that's what they said but this looks more like an adult to me in the photo guys something you have to understand here is whenever they are saying acute retropharyngeal abscess they are actually referring to the retropharyngeal space infection but when they were whenever they are saying chronic retropharyngeal abscess chronic retropharyngeal ab abscess the term itself is very wrong it is actually chronic retropharyngeal abscess is nothing but prevertebral space infection so whenever they are saying chronic retropharyngeal abscess they are referring to prevertebral space infection okay so retropharyngeal only both are right both are behind the pharynx only but remember this um, acute one is the one that they will talk about whenever they talking about retropharyngeal abscess they actually refer to the retropharyngeal space infection that is this one okay and whenever they are talking about prevertebral space infection that is they are calling it also as chronic retropharyngeal abscess remember this is because of tuberculous etiology you will have to give them anti tubercular drugs we are not looking at this one okay we are not looking at this one what are we looking at we are looking at we are looking at this one that is retropharyngeal space abscess okay acute one so it is seen in children below 3 years okay and why will this happen it is the result of suppuration of retropharyngeal lymph nodes secondary to infection of adenoids nasopharynx posterior nasal sinuses or nasal cavity so because of infection of these adenoids nasopharynx posterior nasal cavity etc etc the lymph nodes which are there behind your uh, uh, pharynx that's the retropharyngeal lymph nodes they are affected then you will have this retropharyngeal space abscess okay in adults it is uh, because of uh, penetrating injury it can be there okay and sometimes even acute mastoiditis the pus see in uh, abscess in relation to mastoid infection in that they have mentioned this retropharyngeal abscess so behind the this mastoiditis it will trickle down and cause the retropharyngeal abscess okay so where are we people here we are looking at what and all actually causes retropharyngeal abscess you saw behind the in the nasopharynx some issues adenoids some issues penetrating is, uh, penetrating injury mastoiditis etc these are the causes for retropharyngeal abscess clinical features what will be there if they have a retropharyngeal abscess what will the clinical features be dysphagia dysphagia means difficulty in swallowing right yeah difficulty in swallowing this should be difficulty in swallowing people swallowing okay and uh, they will even have difficulty breathing okay so they are it's totally obstructed their air and food passages both are obstructed so difficulty breathing swallowing everything strider can be there and what type of strider will be there because it is um, supraglottis so what type of strider you think will be there in this noisy breathing strider because of turbulent air flow which strider will be there if it is about the larynx yes it will be inspiratory strider you remember this you are seeing this uh, pharynx and supraglottis inspiratory strider will be there and uh, if you see strider they have written here in strider acquired causes febrile causes this is a febrile cause retropharyngeal abscess because these people will have fever it's an infection right so here we are so these people will have fever they didn't write that but we'll only write a what we'll write fever torticollis the neck becomes stiff and the head is kept extended see the neck is extended can you see here neck is not flexed it's extended so remember this the neck head is kept extended okay I'll give some other color head is kept extended they will have fever okay then bulge in posterior pharyngeal wall usually seen on one side of the midline so these people will have a bulge in the posterior pharyngeal wall yes behind the pharynx so posterior pharynx usually seen on one side of the midline so only one side is affected means only one side of the midline is it or uh, it is unilateral that time only one side will be swollen right so mostly it's a unilateral condition is it then when you do radiograph of soft tissue lateral view of the neck shows widening of the prevertebral shadow and so prevertebral shadow widening you should see in the radiograph and possibly even the presence of gas both of this we are able to see here right so what you should see widening of the prevertebral space with gas formation so behind before the vertebra you should be seeing this 
okay then any associated abscess for example parapharyngeal space also if there is abscess that also can be seen so what did you see in clinical features fever will be there strider will be there then these people will have difficulty swallowing and breathing these people will have their neck extended and uh, what else in the radiograph what and all will you see two things you will see the uh, prevertebral shadow is widened or you can say widening of the prevertebral space right and it will have presence of gas so this is the x ray lateral neck let us look this is one of the indications to take an x ray lateral view of the neck so here you can see guys you can see some soft tissue is more in uh, when uh, in front of the uh, vert prevertebral soft tissue is more you can see this right then this, uh, this is actually pharynx pharynx also uh, retropharyngeal abscess is there retroesophageal abscess is also there they are saying and there is compression of the trachea which is compromi compromising the airway basically this person has a fish bone okay fish bone is there can you say where the fish bone is the cervical spine is straight so this is what they are saying here okay so let's move on what is the treatment you will give for these people you will incise and drain the abscess so without anesthesia this is very scary right without anesthesia they have to incise and drain what will happen if you give anesthesia guys these people they uh, when you are intubating they can have rupture of this abscess and then there can be problem right so you can't uh, intubate these people so they are directly doing incision and drainage without the anesthesia that's scary but here they are saying if you are doing it under general anesthesia make sure that you don't <clears throat> rupture the ab abscess when you are doing intubation okay and you asp uh, you have suction ready so that you can uh, prevent aspiration of pus so if you are giving anesthesia how to give also they are telling okay so you keep the child in supine position with head low mouth is opened with um, a gag then uh, what is this they are saying pharynx is always packed etc vertical incision you will give wherever there is most fluctuant area there only you will give the incision obviously aspiration of abscess can be done before incision oh before incision itself you ask aspiration for an abscess can be done so that's interesting right so you aspire the contents before you do an incision to break the pressure and the gush of pus but to do this aspiration some kind of incision they have to do but looks like they will aspirate it aspirate it before they make any big incision looks like <clears throat> okay then you will give antibiotics as usual then you can do tracheostomy if there is obstruction right uh, especially if there is laryngeal edema very similar to other uh, neck space infection if there is laryngeal edema if there is obstruction to the airway respiratory obstruction one of the indications for tracheostomy is respiratory obstruction which can be caused because of retropharyngeal um, abscess that is actually because of laryngeal edema okay so that's the treatment guys so what did you see in treatment incision drainage without anesthesia with anesthesia antibiotics then tracheostomy if that's necessary that's it that's not they're not telling anything extra extra okay so then we told you if prevertebral space abscess is there that is called as chronic retropharyngeal abscess we are not looking at this in this video it is tubercular that one so you will have to give them anti tubercular drugs that's it incision drainage same thing okay so what did we look at in this video retropharyngeal abscess it is one of the head and neck space infections right and uh, you saw that uh, where is this uh, retropharyngeal space from the base of skull to the tracheal bifurcation it is between the buccopharyngeal fascia and the alar fascia that makes more sense right and um, how will this get infected it will get infected because of some uh, trauma esophageal perforation uh, adenoid infection some nasopharyngeal infection then uh, superation of retropharyngeal nodes etc then even from parotid it can get infected okay so i think here they should have said it is between the buccopharyngeal fascia and the alar fascia that makes sense to me alar fascia it should be okay then this uh, retropharyngeal space is divided by this fibrous raphe into two lateral compartments called as the spaces of gillette okay and uh, th these spaces contain uh, retropharyngeal lymph nodes which uh, disappear retropharyngeal nodes which disappear by 3 to 4 years of age and uh, this communicates with a lot of other spaces which are there okay so what else did you see the 
ret acute retropharyngeal abscess is the infection of this uh, space, retropharyngeal space. It is seen in children because of all these uh, reasons we told you, even mastoiditis. And then what did you see? Clinical features. You have this, um, uh, they'll have difficulty swallowing and breathing. They'll have strider and inspiratory strider they can have. Fever, head is kept extended by these people. The neck is stiff, you can see. And uh, they'll have torticollis. In x-ray, you will see that there is widening of the prevertebral shadow. There is gas, right? And if there is any parapharyngeal space abscess, that also you can see. Okay. Then treatment, you will do incision drainage without anesthesia because intubation can rupture the abscess. Otherwise, you have to be very careful. Antibiotics, you will give. You can try to aspirate the contents before making a very proper incision. Then tracheostomy, you will be required if there is laryngeal edema. And then you saw that chronic retropharyngeal abscess actually refers to the prevertebral abscess, which is because of tuberculosis. Okay. In this video, we are done with retropharyngeal abscess, guys. Bye-bye.